Greetings, my name is Odin from the Odin's Musings YouTube channel, and I'm here on behalf of Aura Crystals. Today I will be showing you the basics of the spiral rope stitch. This is a great introduction to any of the spiral stitches that are available currently in the beading world. This is a very basic stitch, and it runs real fast, so you can easily get this done in an hour or so. There are a lot of variations on what you can do and change the look of the spiral based on the beads that you use, but for today we're going to keep it real simple using one type of bead. So for this project you're going to need two contrasting colors of size 11 seed beads. I'm using a black and a silver, and I will call them color A and color B. A will be our core beads, and B will be our outside beads. You will also need a stop bead or a spring class bead stopper. You will need a clasp of your choice. I'm using a size D weight Nymo in white. But a midweight fire line is definitely good to use as well. Something like a four to six pound test will be just fine. You will also need a beading needle. I am using a size 12 beading needle, and this one will help me out with going through the beads in multiple passes whenever I am ending a thread or attaching my clasp. If you can go with a size 13, that one is also recommended as well, but just go with what you are comfortable with. I would not recommend a size 10 beading needle for this project. You may also need a pair of flat nose or chain nose pliers when you come to ending threads to help you get your needle through the trickier spots. And with that being said, let us get started. So we're first going to start off by threading on our stop bead, just so that we don't have loose beads flying around while we're working with the project. I'm going to leave about a 6 to 8 inch tail so that I can attach the clasp on the other end. Then I'm going to pass back through the bead so that it's secure, and I've got one pass of threads around the outside of the bead. If you have a spring stopper, all you're going to do is open it up and slide your thread into one of the open grooves and close it. I'm going to start off by threading on four color A's. This is our core bead, and three color B's. These are our outside beads. I'm going to pass that down to the bottom of my thread, and then I'm going to pass back up through my four color A beads. When I pull tight, the three outside beads are going to wrap around the core beads. Now, this is the basis of the spiral stitch. We're always going to pass through four beads to move up along our spiral. So I'll show you what I mean with my next stitch. My next stitch, I'm only going to add one color A bead and three color B beads. And when I pull that down, since I have five core beads instead of four, I need to move up so that I go through only four beads. So, counting down from the top, we go one, two, three, four. That is the bead that I want to start from when I do my next stitch. So I am just going to pass my needle through three beads from the previous stitch and the one that I've just added on. When I pull, the next stitch wraps around that second set of beads that I added and forms a new stitch around. Once more, I add one color A and three color Bs, pass it down. From the top of my core beads, I count one, two, three, four. This leaves two underneath, so I want to go through the last four beads in the core. I pull that through, and my outside beads begin to curl around the core. And that is the basis of the spiral stitch. It's a real simple process. We add one color A, three color Bs, pass it down. We count downward from the last column of core beads. One, two, three, four. Pass up through the last four beads and pull so that our color B beads wrap around. Now be careful as you're going through. Make sure that the last stitch you add goes immediately on top of the last stitch before. Make sure it doesn't move over so that another stitch can go in between that because that will ruin the pattern of the spiral. So for example, I'm going to add one more set to my thread. I want to make sure that the last stitch that I added before that stays in the direction of the rest of the spiral instead of moving around so that I accidentally put the new one in between where it doesn't belong. So just keep that in mind. 
I'm going to go one, two, three, four. Pick up the last four. Pull tight. And I've added my next stitch. So you're always going through three beads of the previous stitch and one bead that you would have just added. So one color A, three color Bs, pull it down. Go through three of the four beads from the previous stitch and the new bead that you've just added. And you can see the spiral start to form. Just keep going like that all the way until you have the length that you want or until you need more thread and then I'll show you how to attach new threads. So it's pretty simple to come to the end of your thread and set it up to attach new ones. So coming from our core beads at the top, all we're going to do is pass down through the body beads from our last stitch. Then we're going to pass back up through those last four core beads. And we're just going to do that two more times. So we go down our body beads and go up our core beads. You may need to switch to a smaller needle in order to get through the last group. And once more, I'm just going to go down the outside beads, then go up the core beads again. And from there, my thread is secure enough, so I can go ahead and trim it. To start a new thread, all we're going to do is attach a new one there. We're going to thread through our core beads once more. You may need to get a pair of pliers in order to get the last ones out. We're going to leave a small one inch tail just to have something to hang on to. We're going to pass through our last core bead. And from here we're just going to continue the pattern. So I'm going to add my one color A, three color B's, pass the thread down. I'm going to count down one, two, three, four, and pass through those last beads. And that is our next stitch complete. If you're having a real hard time with ending your threads and having three threads through each of the core beads, feel free to only pass through two times instead of three. So I continue on adding my beads, then move up through my four core beads, and so forth. And as you progress, you can feel this thread is tight, this thread is tight, so you can go ahead and clip your tail end. So attaching your clasp is going to be very similar to ending your threads. What we're going to do is, coming out of the core column, I'm going to add one half of my clasp and pass through the three outside beads. Then to secure it in place, I'm just going to go back through those beads two or three times. So up through the core beads, through the clasp, down through the outside beads, back up through the core beads, and so forth. And one more time, just for good measure. Once again, I've pulled up my pliers to kind of gently tug at the needle, go up my core beads, and after this run, I am just going to clip my thread short. So when I pull at the clasp, it's not going anywhere. Then, Take off your stop bead on the other side and repeat with the other half of your clasp. And that is essentially it for the spiral rope. Once you get comfortable doing the rope with just two seed beads, feel free to experiment with other shapes and sizes to change the look of your final project. For example, in these two examples here, I've used size 11 as cores. I've used two different colors of size 15 seed beads just to kind of form an interesting contrast. And I've used size 8 seed beads in order to make a vibrant pop and point and kind of change the shape compared to one where I've just used size 11s. You can see how this one is flatter around the outside of everything. And this one kind of twists a bit more. Feel free to also experiment with fire polish beads or even bicone beads in the center something like three millimeters 
And you can always expand by using larger row of core beads, such as 5 beads and 6 beads, instead of 4. Play around with it and experiment and see what kind of styles you can create. And remember to take your time and go easy with the pliers when you are pulling it out of your beads, if you need to do so whenever you're ending or attaching your clasp. Go with a needle size that you're most comfortable with, the smaller the better when it comes to ending threads. Thank you so much for joining me on this lesson, I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to check out the description box down below for a detailed materials list as well as links where you can purchase supplies. And feel free to subscribe to Aura Crystals for more updates on jewelry tutorials as well as new design inspirations. And if you would like to see more of my work, feel free to check me out on Odin's Musings right here on YouTube or at odinsbeadhall.com.